Hello, everyone. Welcome back uh, to me versus finite fields. So um, I'm. I want to prove that there is one finite field of each possible order. The possible sizes of a finite field are prime powers. Um, and the last thing I proved on Monday was that if if a number is not a prime power, there's not there's no field with a number of elements. There's no field with six elements because you start adding once, and the moment when you go back to zero has to be a prime number. So either if if you had a field with six elements, you would need to have either that either two is zero or three is zero. And if two is zero, you're a vector space over z two. And a vector space over Z2 is just a product of copies of Z2. And that means it has two, four, eight, 16 elements, not uh, 16. And a vector space over Z3 has a power of three number of elements. Uh, so three, nine, 27, and not six. So we've discarded all the, all the sizes that can't work. Now we have to show that there exists a field and that is unique. Um, so I need to do a little bit of work before I get there, uh, but let me let me just tell you how we're gonna figure this out. Well, actually, I'm just gonna tell you this field, the field with p to the n elements. I'm just gonna call f p n f for field, p to the n for p to the n. So um, f p to the n is going to be the set of roots of x to the p to the n minus x in some extension. Uh, we, we know that you can always find a field extension to have all the roots of a polynomial. So in a splitting field. So first, you know, first you take a splitting field, then you take the set of roots, you realize that that's a field. And, and then you realize that that field was already the splitting field. Um, so, uh, let me close for a second. So, I'm saying that the field, um, the field I'm looking for is the set of roots of this polynomial. Uh, so the first question is how many roots does he have? Um, Hopefully there's p to the n roots if I'm saying that this is a field of further p to the n. So of course, in some field, um, this polynomial has all the roots. Um, but the problem is that these roots, I don't know if they're different or not. And they have, and they are. There are going to be different, but uh, we need to prove that. So um, there are p to the n roots in some extension, but um, we don't know that they are all different. Uh, that's a problem because if two of them are the same, then all of a sudden I don't have p to the n things, I have fewer. Um, so let me just write down a word. Um, the when, when a polynomial doesn't do this to me, it's uh, we call it separable. So basically when it doesn't have repeated roots, So um, it doesn't have repeated roots, but I I, I want to say the, the roots don't repeat even after I found them all. So, you know, the polynomial x squared plus one over the reals has no roots, but the reason that it's separable, it's not that it has zero roots, so they don't repeat, it's that it has two different roots over the complex numbers, but they're different, they're different. So, um, So 
it splits into different um, linear, I guess they should be monic factors. So for example, um, x squared minus two over the rationals is separable because over uh, when I attach the square root of two, which I, I went, then I get the splitting field because it splits into linear factors, but also uh, these are different. which uh, makes it separable. Um, and I guess another example, if I take this polynomial and I square it, this is not separable anymore. Because um, of course it splits as the square of these two. Um, and these have repeated factors. So I would like to prove that this polynomial is separable. Uh, the polynomial x to the p to the n minus x uh, should be separable. And then I would be sure that it has all the roots somewhere. So, um, so that's what I want to do. <clears throat> and there is a way, there is a very easy way to tell if something has repeated roots. Um, and that way is uh, you learn in calculus, I think. So it's using the derivative. So take a polynomial over a field um, <clears throat> so this field this field could be a finite field for example oh, this is so laggy today this this could be a finite field um so uh what do you think the derivative is gonna is gonna be Oh shit! Ooh. All right, um, everything fell to the ground. I, I hope nothing broke, <clears throat> and I hope I managed to edit my swearing out of the video later. Um, so the derivative. The derivative is given is given not in the way you saw in calculus because uh, I mean what you saw in calculus was this um, and maybe well maybe you can make sense of what a limit is. Maybe you can make sense of what a limit means over an arbitrary field, um, but definitely a field is not in principle a place where limits make particular sense. So um, instead of doing this, what we do to take the derivative is uh, take the derivative like you already know how to, um, you, you know what the derivative of polynomial is. So we just, we're gonna take that formula as a definition. So x to the n becomes n times x to the n minus one. You know the power rule. You know the derivative is a linear operation. So we commute with sums and multiplying by constants. <clears throat> and, and this is just definitely a, an operation I can do. So this is by definition in the world of algebra. 
but what still is true so um you can you can show if you if you like but i mean you already know this but That, it, that you can show the product rules still. I mean, the, all the rules you can think of and the, the chain rule still works. Everything works the, the same because it has no other choice. So you could show this just purely algebraically for polynomials. You know, you multiply two monomials and you find the derivative and then you to the other side, you win. Maybe this could be homework, I don't know. No, it's so boring. Um, so um, the thing is, so here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to prove. Uh, we can use the derivative to find a, a repeated roots of a polynomial. So <clears throat> proposition, I guess. Um, a polynomial is separable if and only if f and its derivative are uh, relatively prime. So The greatest common divisor of the polynomial and its derivative is one. <clears throat> and actually, if you okay, so uh, let's prove this. Just prove this. Um, so it's probably, it's easier to show, um, which way is it easier to show? Suppose, um, F has a repeated root, um, a repeated root, so a, and it leaves in some extension of f because you could be inseparable and not have any roots over your over the base field. The thing, the, uh, having repeated roots is something about uh, roots not repeating over any any extension field. <clears throat> so this would mean x minus a squared divides f. Right over the splitting field, f divides as linear as, and splits as linear factors, and the, the factor x minus a repeats. So um, if f of x equals x minus a squared times something else, now I'm just gonna look at this at this equation and take the derivative. So <clears throat> uh, take the derivative f prime of x is the derivative of a product. The derivative of a product is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So if you look at, if you now, plug in x equals a, you will get that f prime of a is zero. So everything on the right-hand side is a multiple of x minus a. So when I plug in x equals a, I just get zeros everywhere. So x minus a divides uh, f prime of x. So I, so I have that x, x minus a squared divides f and x minus a divides its derivative. Uh, so that's a common factor. So, 
So x minus a divides the GCD. So the GCD of f and f prime is not one. So that's uh, that's the proof of one implication. I said if f has a repeated root, I showed that this is a root of the derivative as well. So that's a root of both. So that that's going to give me a common factor. Um, I notice that the GCD. Uh, doesn't change whether I am on the small field or the the field extension um, because of the Swiss identity. Um, maybe I should I, I should do this. So I know there there exist polynomials such that the linear combination is the GCD. So this, this identity holds over f of x. So um, this is a common divisor over e of x as well, because being a divisor doesn't change if you make the field bigger. Um, but if you have any h over a larger field dividing f and f prime, uh, h divides the left hand side. So maybe I should call this the GCD over F. So if H divides F and F prime, you must divide everything on the left. So you must divide the right hand side. And this shows that the GCD didn't change if I made the field bigger. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so that's one implication. I showed that if you take, um, if you find a common root, then the GCD of the, the if you find a double root, then there's a, a common factor of the polynomial and it's a uh, derivative. Uh, conversely, suppose the GCD is not one. So let's call it G. <clears throat> so um, the, the greatest common divisor of F and F prime is not a constant. Um, and I'm supposed to show that this means that F has a repeated root. So I have some polynomial that divides F and, and it also divides F prime. And that's what being the GCD amounts to. So what I need is a root and, and G has roots over some field extension there exists some, some root of G. So this is gonna be a root of the field and its derivative because they're both multiples of G. So from the fact that F of alpha is zero, I have that F of alpha, F of, sorry, F of X is a multiple of X minus alpha. <clears throat> and now let's see, it, I, I want to show that alpha is a repeated root. So how could I do this? I could do this um, if I showed, if I showed that x minus alpha divides h of x. So that's what I'm gonna do. So if you look at this equation and you take the derivative, you have that f prime of x 
it is h, which is the derivative of x minus alpha times h, and then the derivative of the first times the second. So um, if I plug in x equals alpha in here, what I have is that the left hand side is zero because um, a prime of alpha is zero. And here I have h of alpha. And here I also have zero. So x minus alpha divides h of x. And I'm so happy because I'm done. Um, so if I have, so the conclusion is that if I have a common factor of f and f prime, I take a root. And then that has to be a root of the polynomial and its derivative. And from there, and just doing the stuff you might have done in calculus, you can see that that is a double root, at least a double root of the polynomial. Because um, whatever f divided by x minus alpha is, which is this h, also has alpha as a root, as you can see by taking the derivative and using that alpha is a root of this side, alpha has to be a root of this side. So it must be a root of the last thing. So, um, h of uh, alpha is zero. So f of x is x minus alpha times h of x, but h of x itself also has an x minus alpha in there. And, and now I'm done. Okay, so <clears throat> this is this is a fantastic theorem because um, without looking for field extensions and finding without finding the roots, so without factoring anything. I can tell, for example, from the Euclidean algorithm, if f is separable, what you do is you take the derivative and you find the GCD, which, which you could do doing the Euclidean algorithm, which is just doing a few divisions. So if I take this polynomial x to the p to the n minus x, this is a separable polynomial. Um, and the reason is that I can take its derivative. So I have the p to the nth power. So I'm supposed to uh, use the power rule, right? Uh, the power rule says um, the, the, the exponent becomes a coefficient and then the exponent gets subtracted by, by one. And then I have the derivative of x, which is x to the one. So that's just going to be one x to the zero. So the so that's what we that's that's a derivative. But the thing is, p to the n is a multiple of p. So a very strange thing happens in characteristic p, where you can have a polynomial that doesn't is not zero, but the derivative. Um, is because you get a factor there that is just zero. So the derivative of this polynomial, uh, it seems strange because it's not linear, but it's actually, it's a, it's a constant. Um, so the GCD of x to the p to the n minus x and negative one, of course, just has to be one because one of the one of the polynomials I'm looking at there has a zero. It has no divisors other than one on the units. So by the criterion I just shown, this polynomial is separable. Um, 
<laughs> and you can you can check by yourself in any example. If you look at x to the fourth minus x, uh, you can you can I invite you to factor to see that these factors as x times x squared plus one uh, times this irreducible polynomial. And this is, this looks like this, where omega, omega is just the roots. <clears throat> so this is over, over, well, this is over the field with four elements, which I haven't yet proved that it's unique, but I've definitely showed you a field with four elements before as a field that you get when you attach a root of this polynomial to C2. Um, and, and so on. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, let's show at the very least that there, there exists um, a field with p to the n elements. Through the existence of finite fields. Um, <clears throat> so I want to find a uh, finite field of p to the n elements. I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the splitting field of this polynomial over the field with p elements. So um, this has uh, p to the n elements. Sorry, what am I doing? <laughs> so let's say this field is e. So let E be the set of roots. So the, the splitting field is generated by the roots, but normally the set of roots um, is just a set. Um, in this case, it's gonna be a field. Let's say S. S is a set of roots. Of the polynomial. So first of all, the, the number of elements in S is p to the n because x to the p to the n minus x is separable. And that would mean <clears throat> um, and, and that, that means that all the roots are different. And the maximum we can have is the, the degree of the polynomial, which is p to the n. So uh, let us show that S is a field. S is a subfield of E. So for that, we have to show that zero is contained in S. So how do we show that it's contained in this set? Well, it's the set of roots of the polynomial. You have to show that it's a root of the polynomial. There you go. One is in S, well, any power of one is one. So when I subtract X um, itself, I get, I get zero. So um, next it's close under sums. So suppose that we have two elements um, in the set, which means that they're both roots of the polynomial. So I guess the p to the nth power of a is a and the p to the nth power of b is b. So what happens to the sum? What happens to the p to the nth power of that? Well, because of the freshman stream, uh, remember that what happens here is that the binomial expansion that you're supposed to take, um, since we're, we're taking the power, which is the characteristic of the field, all the junk that we wouldn't like to be there is a multiple of p and therefore is zero. So 
that is a to the p to the n plus b to the p to the n. But now, because a, a and b have this property that their powers are the, are the same, uh, a to the p to the n is just n, b to the p to the n is just b. Uh, so a plus b to the p to the n minus a plus b is zero. So a plus b is an element, it's, a, it's a, one of the roots of this polynomial. So, uh, so far this field is, um, uh, it's a ring, it's a, sorry, it's a group under addition, it's a subgroup. This set. Um, let's show that it's close under products, that's even easier. So we have two elements. Um, which means that they are equal to their own p to the nth power. And the question is what happens to the product? Well, what happens to the product is that this is, the product is commutative, so I can regroup however it wants. Um, so it's the product, the power of the products is the product of the powers and both powers are just the original number. And this just means that we're in the set of roots again. So S is a subring of E. And well, what we need to, to have a field is to show that it's close under inverses. And guess how we're gonna do that? Suppose that we have an element in here, uh, but not zero because we, we're not going to have an inverse of zero, of course. What will happen to the p to the nth power of, of the inverse of a? Well, what's going to happen, you guessed it, is that a to the negative p to the n, it's, a, sorry, well, yeah, it's a to the negative p to the n, which is a to the p to the n inverse because we're working over a field after all. Um, and a to the p to the n is itself. Right, so this is every time I use that, the elements of fast have this property. And, and that's it. A, a inverse has this property that it's p to the nth power is itself. It's a root of the polynomial I'm, I'm looking at. By definition of S, it's an element of S. I keep closing the freaking program. All right. So A inverse is in S. So S is a field with P to the N elements. So that's it. That shows the existence. Um, <clears throat> the the existence of of the of a field with p to the n elements for any power of a prime. Uh, now, in fact, um, this means that S is the splitting field. Of x to the p to the n minus x. Um, since it is generated, generated by the set of roots of the polynomial. How do I know that it's generated by this set of roots? Because the set of roots is S. It's, so it's generated by itself of any field is the smallest field that contains itself. So, you know, when you take Q and you think of S squared minus two and, and attaching all the roots of 
all the roots of, of that polynomial to, to Q, you don't expect those roots to themselves form a field. You, you, if you attach the square root of two, you need to attach double of that, and that plus one, and that minus three, and all of those things. But when you look at this particular polynomial and you look at its set of roots, it just so happens to form a field. Uh, so how do you get a field out of those? You don't add anything. Um, so this set of roots, I'm never going to call it S again. It's the it's a field with P to the n elements. Um, so I I got a field of P to the n elements one way. Let me show you that it was actually the only way to do this. So suppose F is a field with P to the N elements. Um, this is so, this is very easy to show actually. If you remember what we know about groups, um, it's group, so if you look at the group that it forms with multiplication, so you remove zero and then the, the all everything left is a unit forms a, a group. It's a group. When you use multiplication, um, and it has order p to the n minus one. Uh, sorry. So f has p to the n elements, and when you remove zero you have one element less. <clears throat> so what happens now, it's a commutative group, right? Because multiplication is commutative. Is that we, we use the, the theorem that you learned from groups, um, the order of any A in a group uh, the order of any element divides the order of the group the, the order of a group is the number of elements uh, so what is it saying the order so the order of an element So I'm not going to prove that for you again. The, the order is the smallest n such that a to the n is 1. Um, and that is a divisor of the number of elements of the group. The number of stuff in G. So in particular, um, the number of if you if you take if you take some other power that's a multiple of n you're gonna get one. So in this case, so applying this to the group uh, the group of units of the field, the order of anything. is um, a divisor of the number of elements he has, which is p to the m minus one. So for every element in here, um, there's an n, which is the order such that, no, not an n. Well, there's a, a y, not a y, yes, like y, a c such that alpha to the C is one and C divides P to the M minus one. Uh, so if I take the power, so P to the M minus one is C times something else. If I take the power of a power of one, so if I take the power of, a, of the C power of alpha, I'm gonna get a power of one, which is just one. So 
alpha to the p to the n minus one is one. <clears throat> so this is true for every alpha in F that is not zero. So for any alpha in F, you have that either alpha is zero or, um, or alpha to the p to the n minus one is one because um, this factor is zero if alpha is zero, of course, and this factor is zero if alpha is not zero. So every time one of them is gonna be zero. And that just means that all the elements of a group of order p to the n are roots of x to the p to the n minus one minus one times x, which is just x to the p to the n of minus x. So um, this field is contained in the set of roots of x to the p to the n minus x. But um, there, there are p to the n many elements in the field, and there are p to the n many roots. So f, I mean, you have a containment, but there's the same number of stuff in both sides, and so finite number of stuff. So f equals the set of roots. And in particular, f, if it equals, it's generated by the set of roots. So what does this mean? That f is a splitting field of x to the p to the n minus x over uh, ZP because, I mean, we have already shown that any field contains um, ZP if the characteristic is P. And now, so I, I started with a field with P to the N elements. I showed that it's a splitting field, um, but that just means that it's isomorphic to the splitting field of this polynomial, because we already know one of the most important theorems we've shown, uh, which we did last week, is that splitting fields are unique. Uh, unique, of course, up to isomorphism, which means that there exists an isomorphism. Um, okay, so that's it. You know, now you know that there is a unique field of order p to the n uh, for every p and every n, uh, which is up there with raindrops and roses and whiskers and kittens. It is one of the most beautiful theorems in math. Um, all right. See you Friday.